Good morning. Good morning. It's a rainy and cloudy day, but always it's a great day to be in the house of the Lord. Can you say amen? Amen. Uh, before I get started, Gene and Freda, thank y'all so much for opening y'all's beautiful uh, ranch to us. Our pleasure, for sure. It's, uh, you know, we uh, had it in their barn, and, you know, I had a big barn at my place in Belton, but it never looked like that. <laughs> it was always packed full of stuff, but uh, thank you all so much for opening it. You didn't look in the well, you know, just like your house, there's certain closets that you don't show off. Uh, but uh, anyway, thank y'all so much. We had a wonderful time. Uh, a good crowd of folks. And uh, I don't see Pam here this morning. I was going to thank her for all that she did to uh, uh, get everything set up and uh, get arranged for us. Um, are there any other business or anything that we need to cover this morning? Johnny, do you know of anything? No, I just want to thank you so much again, like you did. Okay, okay. Um, then let's uh, go to the Lord and pray. Uh, we need to uh, continue to remember Kathy and Hack Branch. Uh, they're not <coughs> doing well. Rare notes. Big question. Rare notes. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Thank you for reminding me, Bill. <laughs> Yeah, prayer notes. Uh, Kendall and Watt, yeah, I saw Pat earlier this week, and Kendall's just not doing well. Uh, she's having a really hard time getting over this uh, chest uh, congestion and a lot of cough, and just not feeling well. So, uh, prayer notes for Kendall, uh, and uh, wish her a, a pleasant week and try to encourage her hard a little bit. Uh, birthdays, Nancy, can you let us in? I uh, know. <laughs> uh, we've got uh, Bob Robin or Boo Robinson, and I guess that's how you say Boo, Boo. and uh, Joy Cummings' uh, birthdays uh, this uh, coming week. Uh, so we could sing a cappella on that. Let's wish yeah. them a happy birthday. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday. Now back to our prayer list. Uh, Ken, or Kathy and Hack, uh, Brent, uh, Barbara and Weldon, we need to continue to lift up. Brett and Jean, we're gonna continue praying for y'all. Bill, uh, you said that you're doing much better and on the uphill swing, uh, but we're gonna continue praying for you. Uh, Brenda and Paul, uh, we're gonna continue praying for Helen and Charles. Uh, Kendall, I had her on uh, my prayer list this morning. We need to continue to lift her up in our prayers. Uh, Beth, I believe, is traveling, uh, so we need to... High blood pressure. Oh, high blood pressure. Okay, so we need to lift the, uh, uh, Beth up in our prayers. Are there any others that we need to uh, lift up this morning? Nancy? Lowell hurt his back. Lowell? Lowell hurt his back. But he is much better. But I mean, and they're going to be in church this morning. But just you know, keep remembering. Any other? Any praises this morning? Yeah, I do have concern. I, I have a, a, a little cousin. Her husband, uh, her name is Mia, but her husband's name is John. The baby, he has been diagnosed with lung cancer, and it's moved to his brain. So his days just play for the family. Thank you. Any praises this morning? Yes, ma'am. My granddaughter Campbell is graduating from college Friday. Ooh, yes, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Amen. We prayed long and hard for her. Congratulations to Campbell. Yes, ma'am. We're going to have our first great grandchild in August. Oh. Okay. Congratulations. Praise. 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 Praise.
We thank you that you are always there to lead and to guide us in your way and your truth. Thank you that you are intimately involved with our lives and long for us to be intimate with you. Thank you for our church. May it continue to be a place where people feel loved and accepted. Lord, this morning, hear our weak cries and lead us in your ways. Strengthen our hearts as we feed upon your word that comes from the one good shepherd. Keep our eyes so firmly fixed upon Jesus that, that earthly treasures, no matter how exciting, cannot divert our vision from your guiding hand. Train our ears to distinguish your voice, concise and clear, amid all the noise of conflicting desires and mounting urges that compete for our attention. In a culture that enshrines self as the one and only leader, may we submit ourselves to your shepherding love and mercy. Lord, for those who are sick and recovering and we call them by name in your presence this morning, Lord, I pray that your healing hand would be upon them. For those in our congregation who have lost loved ones, we pray that your peace and comfort, which is beyond our understanding, sustain them in their time of need. Lord, we praise you this morning, saying, The Lord <clears throat> is my chosen portion and my cup. You hold my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. I have a glorious heritage. I bless the Lord who gives me counsel. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me. The Lord is at my right hand. I shall not be moved. We pray this and so much more. In the precious name of Jesus, and everyone agrees by saying, Amen. Amen. Sunday school to me down, but you guys pretty surprised me. Thank you for being here. Um, and the parking lot's full. Yeah. I know. I turned the corner this morning. I was just going to die. I guess they didn't know it rained. Yeah. Uh, we need to pray for people that we'll never know and we'll never meet. Uh, people in Nebraska, Omaha area. A little town in South Oklahoma, it's kind of southeast of Oklahoma City. Uh, they had videos of that this morning they did not have yesterday. It's about a half a mile wide, maybe one mile long, and then he took out the whole town. I mean, just foundations. Uh, it's amazing that there were 100 people killed. Omaha got hit really hard. Other, it was like 14 or 40 tornadoes in you know, the last yeah, yeah. area, Iowa. Oklahoma, et cetera, where he got hammered big time. We need to pray for folks. It's going to be months and months and maybe a couple of years to get right back where they started a day ago, two days ago. Uh, but death toll is <clears throat> maybe one or two if you think it's a miracle. After looking at the videos, it's just a miracle. Okay, I want to echo what uh, Bill said with <clears throat> the MRFs and what a great time we had at your ranch and you're hosting us in your beautiful barn and uh, those of you that maybe didn't get to go because the weather, the barn turned out perfect, no wind in the barn, and pretty comfortable. Um, that said, he really appreciated y'all letting him stay for the service. He enjoyed it immensely. <laughs> we had uh, uh, the most unique people really enjoyed it. <laughs> we won't call him the most unique mafia here. <laughs> Thank you. 
Total attendance is 65. Lower than that 24, 25 less than last year. It doesn't surprise me because of the weather. We had very, very chilly that morning. Uh, then the wind got up. Anyway, out of 65, though, the key that number is 33 for visitors. That's amazing. That's what we started in Zimbabwe. It wasn't for us, it was for visitors, <coughs> asking people to attend. And some of those visitors, you know, cornered me as they left and told me how much they loved it and appreciated it. They just thought it was wonderful. Anyway, so that's what it's all about. And uh, thank you, Mercy, for allowing that to happen and working so hard to make it perfect. Uh, A man was walking down the street and was accosted by a particularly dirty and shabby looking homeless man who asked him for a couple of dollars for dinner. The man took out his wallet, extracted $10 and asked, if I give you this money, will you go buy some beer or instead of a dinner? No, 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 I had to stop drinking years ago, the homeless man replied. Well, will you spend it on green fees at a golf course instead of food, the man asked. Yes. Are you nuts, replied the homeless man. I haven't played golf in over 20 years. Well, said the man, I'm gonna give you the money. I'm not gonna give you the money. I'm gonna take, instead I'm gonna take you home for a hot shower and a terrific dinner cooked by my wife. The homeless man was astounded. Well, won't your wife be furious with you for doing that? man replied, that's okay. It's important for her to see what a man looks like after he's given up drinking and golf. <laughs> okay, these are just different musings as they would say. <clears throat> I just did a week's worth of cardio after walking into a spider web. <laughs> a recent study has found that women who carry just a little extra weight live longer than men who mention it. <laughs> we can all understand this one, okay? Kids today don't know how easy they have it. When I was young, I had to walk 10 feet through shag carpet to change the channel. <laughs> Remember when mom and dad said, go change the channel? There's only five, five choices, but you know, six choices, but you have to go up there and turn that big knob. <sighs> Senility has been a smooth transition for me. A thief broke into my house last night and started searching for money, so I woke up and searched with him. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, I'm looking for some blondes here. Okay. On a bitterly cold winter morning, a blonde was listening to the radio during breakfast. She heard the announcer say, we're going to have maybe eight to 10 inches of snow today. You must park your car on the even number side of the street so that the snow plows can get through. So the good wife went out and moved the car. A week later, while she was eating breakfast again, the radio announcer said, we are expecting 10 to 12 inches of snow today. You must park your car on the odd number side of the street so that the snow plows can get through. The good wife went out and moved her car again. The next week, the wife was with her husband having breakfast when the radio announcer says, we are expecting 12 to 14 inches of snow today. You must park, and then the power went out. <laughs> the good wife was very upset. And with a worried look on her face, she said, I don't know what to do. What side of the street do I need to park so that the snow plows can get through? Then, with the love and understanding in his voice, 
that all men have who are married to blondes. <laughs> the husband replied, why don't you just leave the car in the garage and stop? <laughs> I'm going to need two readers. Uh, we're going to book a mark, mark four, one, two, twenty. And I think I did this. Hang on a minute. Somebody read chapter four, verse one through ten. And a second reader read verse eleven through twenty. It's real easy, no big words. Who'll be first reader? Who wants to borrow my Bible? Okay. First reader, one through ten, in a minute, in a second. Second reader. Okay, thank you, Beth. All right, hang on a second. Yeah. No, I got to admit, I wanted to suggest to you that we all take our name tags home with us. When you wear them in church so people see your name tag and ask you about, you know, New Horizons, whatever. Well, I took mine home two weeks ago. It's still in my car. <laughs> I forgot, okay? Maybe a thing to do is leave them right here, okay? Uh, chapter in Mark is responding to God's word. <clears throat> uh, you can find them in the middle of busy cities, sometimes shoehorned between towering skyscrapers, sometimes perched in boxes on high balconies, and even flourishing on the exposed corners of luxury penthouses. Stately old country homes and suburban cookie-cutter homes have them too. And of course, the rustic, rambling farmhouses of rural back roads always have them. Gardens. Gardens. They come in all shapes and sizes, vegetables, fruit, and crops of various kinds usually give away their sores taste. There's something unforgettable about tucking tiny seeds into the soil and watching what happens. Have you ever planted seeds and watched them grow? We all have, okay? What impresses you most about the growth process? What impresses you most? I'm gonna go first. If you don't water it, they won't come up. They gotta have moisture. They gotta have, you know, you gotta feed them. You gotta feed them moisture. Anybody else? Can you put them in the closet? They need light. Anybody else? Light. Judy? I have a big round tub that I don't even remember the name You have to have good dirt to start with, and we're going to talk about that very thing. Soil is so, so important. People flock to hear Jesus teach and see him heal. We've read and read and read and seen movies and so forth. The following was just amazing to me. That they seemed more interested in his wonders than his words. When Jesus used a planting story, he had his audience's attention. 
a planting story. They were all familiar with the realities of plowing soil and sowing seed. His parables provoked curiosity. They sounded like the parables told by the rabbis in the synagogue. Yet Jesus' story seemed deeper, truer, and harder to understand. Even the disciples found it difficult to grasp his points. When they asked what it meant, Jesus told them, First reader, please. Parable of the sower. Again, Jesus began to teach by the lake. The crowd that gathered around him was so large that he got into a boat and set out on the lake, while all the people were along the shore at the water's edge. He taught them many things by parables. In his teaching, he said, listen, the farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path, and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly because the soil was shallow. But when the sun came out, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Other seed fell among the thorns, which grew up and choked the plants so that they did not bear again green. Still others fell on good soil. It came up and grew, produced a crop, multiplying 30, 60, or even 100 times. Then Jesus said, he has ears to hear, let him hear. When he was alone, the 12 and the others around him asked about the parables. Okay, let me go back and read this one sentence. Then Jesus said, you people who can hear me, listen. It's one of those times he was very firm in his message. Listen to me. Okay, second reader. Yes, ma'am, Bev. He told them the secret of the kingdom of God has been given to you, but to those on the outside, everything is said in parables, so that they may be ever seeing but never perceiving, ever hearing but never understanding. Otherwise, they might turn and be forgiven. Then Jesus said to them, Don't you understand this parable? How then will you understand any parable? The former sows the word. Some people are like seed along the path where the word is sown. As soon as they hear it, Satan comes and takes away the word that was sown in them. Others, like seeds sown on rocky places, hear the word and once receive it, and at once receive it with joy. But since they have no root, they last only a short time. When trouble or persecution comes because of the word, they quickly fall away. Still others, like seeds sown among thorns, hear the word, but the worries of this life, the deceitfulness of wealth, and the desire for things comes in and chokes the word, making it unfruitful. Others, like the seed sown on good soil, hear the word, accept it, and produce a crop, some 30, some 60, some 100 times what was sown. Yeah, thank you both for reading. Go back to the 13th verse here. Then Jesus said to his followers, don't you understand this story? Don't you understand this parable? I mean, I think it's one of those days when you just just got a little frustrated. Uh, don't you understand? Come on. First question. What does each type of soil in Jesus' story represent? I'm sorry, Donnie. You won't? You yeah. Won't I would say he has no faith, he has little faith, and he has big faith. Okay. Good. Others? Come on. Tony, I think it represents the heart. I'm sorry, Bill, what? Represents the heart and how we receive. The heart. Yeah. Okay. We're going to talk more about this. Let's go to another next question. <clears throat> what do the sower, that's me, I'm throwing the seeds, okay? And the seed represent? The sower, 
person and the seed. The word. Well, they represent in a spiritual way. The word. Ma'am? The word. The word. Word of God. Instead of reaching down and getting a big handful of seeds, and we've all done that. But to speak something to someone maybe that maybe doesn't believe or it's not there yet, uh, needs a little, you know, uh, persuasion, if you will. That's not the right word. But, uh, anybody else? Come on. There's no bad answer. Too hard a question. <laughs> Next question. How does this story, the story of the seeds, parallel our spiritual lives? How, how does it parallel our spiritual lives? Yes, ma'am, Bev. I, I'm not sure this answers the question, but or the specific question you asked, but if we look at this example, only 25% of the people who hear it will receive it. And, but the, the, that's one side of it that I don't need to get discouraged if I'm speaking to somebody or, or whatever and they don't seem to be receptive to it because that's, you know, I need to speak to 100 people in order for 25 to, to understand or be touched or whatever. It, it's not me anyway, it's the Holy Spirit. But, but the other thing is, the soil can be improved. If you are a farmer, you know that if you, go, if you have rocks in your field, you go out and get the rocks. Or if you have weeds, you go take care of the weeds. You know, so just because the seed doesn't produce anything on the first go round, we shouldn't give up. Yeah, yeah good point. Well, Johnny, I, I recently planted some Bermuda seeds. One of the primary instructions was you had to moisturize it or water it every day. Every day. And I think of that as our spiritual life. We have to, in essence, water it or moisturize it or renew it every day. And I, uh, it's crazy that that's the question because I've thought about that often because I was so diligent in making sure I watered it every day. And I need to do that with my personal life. Yeah. Yeah, great example. How's your grass doing? Great. Better than my body. Thank you, Lord. Turn the sprinkler back on. Johnny? Yes, ma'am. Cultivate. Ma'am? Cultivate. Cultivate. Wow. Uh, I love that word. Be, that can be the environment, that can be your relationships, that can be how you uh, express your faith. Lots of different yeah, ways cultivate. to cultivate. Great word in this example. Great word. It just doesn't happen. It's just like the seed that Jim planted. You have to water it. You have to nurture it. You have to, you know, I'm going to use the word fertilize it. And we could turn that into a spiritual a word. Uh, okay. Johnny? Yes, I'm sorry. I think it talks about thorns. I think you have to be careful in this life because there are so many things that can just strike you. Uh, you have to, you know, you have to keep your focus right. Mm -hmm. You know, there's, we're going to get into that a little bit more in just a second. That's a very, very good point. Mm -hmm. You can't just walk off. There's going to be situations, there's going to be weather situations that affect uh, the growth of that plant, of that grass. And so you have to counter that in your own way. And it's like life. It's not perfect. We're all going to have bumps. And uh, how you deal with that is the key thing. Johnny. How you deal with it. Johnny. I'm sorry. I think transplant is another word that we could put there, too, because 
Uh, I had a gardener tell me that all I do is transplant. And I'm thinking, what? But she's right in that you've got to find the place where the seed will grow. And so it's got to be sometime trial and error, sometime by direction. Um, but if you put that seed or that plant where it gets enough light and it doesn't get too much sun or, you know, these kind of things, whatever it thrives on. And I think sometimes people need to transplant themselves to a healthier situation and then they will grow too. Very good. <coughs> John, so far we've been talking a lot about the seed. I think we need to talk about the sower. The sower doesn't know where the seed is going to be falling. But they, you cannot stop sowing. You have to continually cast the word, <laughs> cast the seed, because you never know what you're going to get. The seeds, as we know, are basically the story, the message. Someone's got to produce that. Someone's got to tell it. Uh, in, in, a, in 20 different ways you can tell that. And that could be in person. Um, we talk about this over and over. It's scary when we talk in a group, in a small group maybe, the people that listen, and you never know what they're hearing. You never know what they're processing of what you say. And I found that true so many years. John and some others here that <coughs> went to Rotary with for 30 years. And you sit across from people, and you're beside people, and all of a sudden you start talking about something, and two weeks later someone taps you on the shoulder when you're walking out of the facility and to say, you remember what you said two weeks ago? What were we talking about? <laughs> they remind you and he's, and they said, it really touched me. I said, what? And then you get in your car and you go back to work and you say, how can this, what I said, how can I touch somebody's life? You never know. It's scary. In a good way, in the same works in the negative way. Guilty, guilty, guilty. Um, if we do that, how does this story that you parallel our spiritual life? Can we do that? No. No? I does this stories of the seeds parallel our spiritual life? Yes, Bobby. Well, uh, I was thinking about that, I, and I, I think we can say. And we can talk about being Christians and what God means to us, to others. But if we don't walk the walk, we just talk the walk. Talk, the walk. They're not. They're that. That's yep. falling on deaf ears. They're not going to listen to you. You got to more. You got to do more than talk. You got to act for Christ. Exactly right. Others, yes, ma'am. As sowers. We need to keep our priorities straight so that we will be an example of Jesus' love because they look to us whenever we talk to them, we act in. A constant example, and that's, in, says, in my case, nearly impossible to be constant with everything you say and do, your actions. And like I gave that one example, you just never know. Uh, you're impressing someone or disappointing someone, or they're questioning someone. Well, I thought he was a Sunday school teacher. He told a pretty rough joke. Guilty. <laughs> Bill. Johnny, I, I'm sure there's a lot of people that have experienced this <clears throat> in their jobs. You may not just overtly go out and, and make a witness or tell people about your Christianity. But it's just the way you carry yourself, the way you treat people, the way they observe you uh, when they're in a crisis or they need someone to pray for them, they know who to come to. Yep. And uh, I'm sure a lot of people have experienced that. Yep. Uh, you know, 
that as a teacher, I couldn't stand up there and tell people about my Christianity or my walk of faith. But if kids had problems, they knew they could go see Mr. Bells. I even had parents come to me because of the witness that I had to the way that I carried myself, the way that I cared. And uh, so, you know, we, we just need to be conscious all the time because people are watching and, and mm -hmm. looking at how we carry ourselves. There's always someone watching. It seems like. Okay. Johnny. I'm sorry. Yes. When our grandson was in Derby Springs, he played, was playing football, and the coach went to the same church that they did. But when the coach was out there coaching, it was 180 degrees, and it really turned my grandson off. It, it was like, this guy's a hypocrite, you know? He doesn't practice what he preaches. Yeah, it's sad that someone that young recognizes the difference and said, hey, uh, hypocrites are the worst. Okay, question. How will our lives change when we begin to bear fruit? How will our lives change when we begin to bear fruit? Let's say you're going to explain that to someone. <coughs> Uh, this, this person is hungry. Uh, they need to hear the word. How, how, do, how, do, you, how, how do you how do you do that? Our lives will change when we bear fruit. What does bear fruit mean? Just anybody, just simple, something simple. I just think when you see some, what? Take for instance, Cairo's prison ministry. I, I, when I went to Cairo's prison ministry, I didn't want to go. I did not want to go. In fact, I'll tell you the story later, but I, it's, it's too long a story. But when I got there, you know, I had a hard heart when I walked in those prison walls. But when I walked out of those prison walls, man, I get goosebumps to think what the lives, how those lives changed from Thursday to Sunday. And these guys wouldn't even speak to you, and they were standoffish, and that by Sunday they're hugging you, telling they love you. And if that's not powerful, mm. if that doesn't make you know that there is a God, I don't know what would. What would. Yeah. Good point. Good, good, good. Her. Prison ministry for so many years, and absolutely that was one of her favorite things she's ever done. And uh, uh, yeah, you, you put a lot into it, but you get ten times more back. Uh, okay. At different times in our lives, our soil type, soil type may change. Which soil type <coughs> currently represents your response to God and His Word? What soil type currently <coughs> represents your response? Yes, ma'am. Sharon? I think my soil type changes sometimes daily. <laughs> You're being honest. <laughs> well, uh, great response. Honest. Honest. Yes, ma'am. Well, my soil type, as Sharon's, changes, you know, throughout the day. And like Jim's Bermuda seed, and I need watering all the time. Yeah. And it's it's like uh, Bill said one day, pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing is really <coughs> just, it's an innate habit. 
says, yes, we may be the only Bible that another person ever reads. Yeah, I haven't said that in a while either. Uh, scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Scary to me. Let me try to finish this real quick. We've got five minutes at least. Think about the first encounter. Uh, think about your first encounter with Christ. Robe yourself in that moment. Resurrect the relief. Recall the purity. Summon forth the passion. Can you remember? As I can, this is Max Lepato talking. said, I can, in 1965, a red-headed 10-year-old with a tornado of freckles sits in a Bible class on a Wednesday night. And I remember of the class, what I remember of the class are seeing school desks with initials carved in them, a blackboard, a dozen or so kids, some listening, some not, a teacher wearing a suit coat too tight to button around his robust belly. He was talking about Jesus. He was explaining the cross. I know, I'd heard it before, but that night, I heard it for sure. You can't save yourself, you need a savior. I can't explain why I connected that night as opposed to another, but it did. He simply articulated what I was beginning to understand. I was lost and he explained what I needed, a redeemer. From that night on, my heart belonged to Jesus. 10 years old. Many would argue that a 10 year old is too young for such a decision and they might be right. All I know is that I never is that I've never made a more earnest decision in my life. I didn't know much about God, but what I knew was enough. I knew I wanted to go to heaven, and I knew I couldn't do it alone. This is Mike Cicada. No one had to tell me to be happy. No one had to tell me to tell others. They couldn't keep me quiet. 10 year old Max Cicado. I told my friends at school, I put a bumper sticker on my bicycle. Mm. I just think that's cool. <coughs> Someone was one of the most popular writers in, in, our, in our time. Okay, one more question and then. This is. What, what, what tactics does Satan use to prevent us from hearing and understanding God's word? What, what is, how does Satan get in there and mess things up? Huh? What does he do? Yes, ma'am. I think he sows doubt in people's minds. Doubt. A big word. Yeah. <coughs> Distractions. Distractions. Busyness. Oh, man. So many. So many, uh, it seems like there's, there's more today than there was 10 years ago or 20 years ago, and maybe it's because of the media, maybe it's the way television has been a big part of our lives and how it uh, affects our lives, sometimes in a positive way, sometimes in a very negative way. Uh, Let me conclude with this. At times it may be helpful to think of your whole life as a certain kind of source, asking God to show you what kind of changes he desires to make in you. At other times it may be helpful to think of specific areas of your life as different kinds of source. Hmm. You are more like a farm than a field. And God is busy planting in some places, tending in others, and harvesting in other corners of your life. Take a thought 
thoughtful tour of your life, considering different areas and asking God to point out ways you can be more responsive and obedient to him. In this kind of closing prayer, it says, Jesus, you are the, you are the patient sower in my life. Thank you. You've used others to place certain seeds, and sometimes I know I haven't appreciated their work as I should have. Help me express gratitude when I sense that you are placing others in my life to serve you on my farm. Lord, do what you need to do to make my fields productive for you. I'm the farmer and farm, but I belong to you. Close in prayer. Father God, thank you for stories like this and authors that make it pretty simple. Uh, how it kind of stirs our pot to think and maybe be creative and age makes no difference. We can all be a little bit better. We never get to exactly what we want to be. We also fall. We slide back, as they say. Father God, just help us just, you know, um, maintain, grow, advance closer to you. Father God, uh, we use all these simple words, but uh, we want to thank you for all you give us. Just in the last few hours, the rain that you gave us. Some of us have prayed every day for rain, and Lord, that you, that you deliver this morning. Thank you, Father, for that. Of all the things that we are thankful for, that you give us, that you bless us with, we go again to the top of the list. And we thank you for your son, Jesus. And it's in his special and beautiful name that we pray. Amen.